Welcome to this Sunday's Gospel Reflection. Well, a very old lady looked in the mirror one morning and she noticed that she had only three remaining hairs on her head. Being a positive soul, she said, I think I will braid my hair. So she braided her three hairs and she had a great day. Some days later, looking at the mirror again, well, she saw that she had only two hairs remaining. Hmm, two hairs, she said. Fancy a center parting today. And she duly parted her two hairs and as ever, she had a great day. A week or so later, she saw uh, that she had just one hair left on her head. One hair, she mused. Well, I know what. I'll make a ponytail. It will be perfect. And again, she had a great day. There are two kinds of, or two ways of seeing and two kinds of blindness. One kind is curable, curable blindness. The other kind of blindness is incurable. You see, we all, like poor Bartimaeus, we want to see. That's normal, that is good. But often we are blind because we are unable to see. We are all born blind, not because we do not have the ability to see with our eyes, but because we are still unable to distinguish and recognize what we see or whom we are seeing. This blindness is curable. It can be cured. Those who love us will show us what we are unable to see yet. And if we are humble enough, we learn how to see. Jesus could cure Bartimaeus because of one condition. He admitted that he was blind. Master, I want to see. If you want to see, your blindness will be curable. If you don't want to see, no one can cure you from your blindness. The problems start when we are as yet not aware of our own blindness. Or even worse, when we simply refuse to see reality because it disturbs us, it inconveniences us. Once a blind man was standing at the side of the road, a busy road, which he wanted to cross. He did not dare take a step forward. Finally, he bumped into a passerby and asked him to help him cross the road. The man simply grabbed his hand and started crossing the busy road. And when they were safe on the other side, the blind man thanked his benefactor and asked him who he was. He told him that he was the famous jazz pianist named George Shearing. He was blind too. You see, the difference between the two blind men was that the first was paralyzed by his blindness. George, the second blind man, had faith that made him see what his eyes could not see. This is why Jesus said to Bartimaeus, Your faith has saved you. We are all blind in so many ways, but let us ask ourselves, is our blindness curable? Or do we choose to die in our blindness? 
and never cross the road to the safety of the other side. Yes, there is always another side to everything. Nothing is one-sided. Nothing in life is simple. Nothing is straightforward in life. What a pity it is when we obstinately refuse to see the other side of a person. We judge and condemn people because of their color, ideas, fixations, race, status, whatever we choose to see. But there is another side. How terrible life becomes when we choose to see only that side of reality which either terrifies us or which attracts us. How often we let our fears or our satisfaction imprison and blind us. If only we have enough faith to see others, to see ourselves, everything else in life with the eyes of God. And not just with our myopic, short-sighted human eyes. One doctor's advice to his young medical students was this. Before you tell them the fees that you are going to charge, wait until the patients are in greater pain. That doctor was blind. He could never see the patients. Only the money he could get out of their pain. That is cruel blindness. Is not this the way we too often look at ourselves? Is not this why all of us are tormented by our weaknesses, faults, limitations? Because we fail to see the other side of the coin. Our successes, our good qualities, our blessings. It's like that old lady of our story. You know, she did not see all the hairs that she had lost, but she concentrated on the hairs that she had left. And that made her day a great day. This is faith. It is seeing not just the silver lining in our misfortune, but seeing the greatness that we are called to and are capable of achieving thanks to those very misfortunes or mistakes that torment us. Let's stop for a moment. Close our eyes and let us imagine we were Bartimaeus in his dark blindness. If we only had the faith of Bartimaeus and when Jesus asks us, what do you want me to do for you? Let us place our blindness at his feet and trustfully ask him, Master, that I may see. Imagine what Bartimaeus experienced. The man born blind. He had never seen anything, anyone. And when he opened his eyes for the first time in his life, the first thing he saw was the face of Jesus. His enchanting, loving eyes gazing upon him. Our eyes would be opened and we would discover that even in our deepest darkness, Jesus has never taken away his gentle and penetrating eyes from us. In his eyes, we have always been and will always remain beautiful and precious. Let us today humbly ask him to enable us to see ourselves with his own eyes so that we can discover how beautiful, how precious we are in his eyes. 
Only then can our eyes be truly opened, our blindness cured, and discover, perhaps for the first time in our lives, our own beauty, our own preciousness, as well as that of those around us. In spite of our failings, weaknesses and failures as humans, like Bartimaeus, we too will be enchanted by his loving and tender eyes, and we too we will start following him. Like a powerful magnet, his beauty will draw us to himself, because it's only his love for us that can bring our beauty to its full radiance. Dear Jesus, today we pray, open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, so that we can see ourselves and those around us with your transforming eyes and not with our limited, half-blinded eyes. There is so much beauty around us, if we could only see it. Teach us, Lord, how to see it. God bless you and thank you.